Topic of discussion now on the Sports Smack Zone. The Trinbago Knight Riders bounce back from their loss to the Falcons to beat St. Lucia Kings in the Republic Bank Caribbean Premier League at Darren Sammy Cricket Stadium in Grosselet, St. Lucia on Tuesday night. Here's Gerard Morisile with a recap. St. Lucia Kings were put into bat by the Knight Riders as both teams sought to avoid back to back defeats. The Kings off to a rollicking start. Captain Faf Duplissy and Johnson Charles putting on 40 for the first wicket. Sunil Narayan was again brilliant, bagging 2 for 13, including Charles for 29 to leave the home side 40 for 1 after 4. The highlight of the Kings' innings was the partnership between Rostan Chase shot. and destructive Sri Lankan Banuka Rajapaksa. Six of the 13 sixes in the Kings' innings came from that combination as the pair put on 80 from 58 deliveries for the fourth wicket with Chase adding 41 and Rajapaksa 33. It's got height, it hasn't got distance. Safely held. Chase eventually went on to top score with 56 as the Kings posted 187 for 6 off their 20 overs. Narayan hasn't been a hit with the bat yet for TKR this tournament and he failed again, caught for 14 with the score on 20. But two half centuries would deliver victory for the Knight Riders. 21 year old Barbadian Shakir Paris gave an insight into his immense talent, the right hander smashing 57 of 33 deliveries. But there was still work to be done at the back end, and that's where skipper Kyron Pollard came in. The powerful right-hander hammered 52 of 19 balls, including four sixes in the penultimate over, bowled by Matthew Ford. TKR eventually eased into 189 for six to win by four wickets with five deliveries to spear. But the mighty Kyron Pollard. Look, I think 190. I would have taken that score. I thought it was. Probably about five over what we thought we would get, so happy with that. Disappointed with the power play um, initially. I think we went for 70 in the first six, so that's my one concern um, tonight here. Yeah. But then after that unbelievable fight back by everyone against the powerful batting lineup, uh, great to stay in the contest right till the end. Um, and then unfortunately, obviously, that second last over just went. Probably two, two too many sixes. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a very good game of cricket, you know, from both sides. Obviously, you know, Sanusha batted, you know, well to get 180. I thought it was a good wicket. Um, but it's in there, I thought 15, 20 runs a bit too much because the way that we had them when you pulled them back in the middle. TKR have now jumped to third with four points from three matches ahead of Antigua and Barbuda Falcons. St. Lucia Kings, who were leaders five days ago, are now fifth, having suffered back to back defeats. Guyana Amazon Warriors still lead with maximum six points ahead of Barbados Royals, who are also perfect. St. Kicks and Nevis Patriots remain at the foot on two points. Yeah, big win there by the TKR on Tuesday night. And their 37-year-old skipper, Kyron Pollard, showing that he still has shots to fire. Yeah, and that was brilliant because for me, as a TKR supporter at the moment in time, felt as if all was lost. Uh, you know, when you look at how the match was poised, Lance and Ricardo, but then you see one six and then you see another six and there are a lot more sixes where that came from and you begin to feel so, so excited. And it was one of those matches, Lance, that I really wish I was at the ground looking on because you have to be there live to get that sort of feeling, you know, the excitement that the CPL brings with it. And I was so, so happy. Can you tell by the way I'm telling you? Yes, yes, fully. <laughs> I, I fully digest what you're saying. Um, Chapo, you're, you're a student of the game. Talk to us about how impressed you were with Shakir Paris. Yeah, very good knock. And there was a part of the innings when he was tested with a short delivery from Azari Joseph. Incidentally, it wasn't um, that short. The ball really didn't get up. And he tried to get out of the way of it, hit the bat. And uh, you thought to yourself, well, they're going to pepper him with short deliveries now. But from there on, he handled himself very, very well, I thought. And uh, to score that half century and in very quick time as well, to set up the win for his team. But you have to give a lot of credit to the captain, Kyron Pollard, because he was sensational with, what, 27 to get from the final 12 deliveries and Pollard hitting 
four sixes in the penultimate over. Now remember, at the start of the tournament, I said one of the players I wanted to see how he would handle himself in the CPL is Matthew Ford. He's had the opportunity to play in the West Indies setup to be around the West Indies players, and he's done pretty well at that level. But here's the thing, I wanted to see how he would operate in different phases of the game. We know that he does very well at the top, but how well can he go at the back end? Last night was an opportunity for him to show exactly what he has um, and I don't want to say he failed because Kyron Pollard played some magnificent shots but I think Matthew Ford will say to himself I did not hit my areas last night and this is an opportunity for me to learn and come back and be a lot better with bowling at the deck. Let us just say last night wasn't the best representation of what I think the young man can produce. Yeah, but it's definitely a learning opportunity. I'm so happy that you said that because we always have to remember when these uh, Windies players go up against opponents, it's like Australia's, the India's. So the chance that he got to bolt our Karen Pollard, um, a massive person, the way he hits those sixes, you know, very, very powerful. I think I have to agree with you with that learning moment. It's so, so important. I hope that he doesn't have to learn anymore for the rest of the CPL because then it drops his stocks and, you know, his stats. But it was that aha moment where I need to go back, work on some things because if I face Pollard again, this is not going to happen for me. Yeah, yeah, and when you're playing against someone like Karen Pollard, Lance and Mariah, and especially bowling at this stage of the innings, you have to be very deliberate about what type of deliveries you want to bowl, where you want to bowl at him, what are the plans um, in terms of the field set and so on. And you look at those four deliveries that went for six. As far as I'm concerned, all four of them in the arc of Kyron Pollard. There was one that was a short delivery, but with nothing really to it. Someone of the quality of Kyron Pollard is going to smash that over mid-wicket every day of the week. Another couple of them over pitch deliveries. That's meat and drink for Kyron Pollard. So he has to go back now and really work at hitting his spots at the death, at the back end of the innings and, and being better than he was last night. Yeah, and Pollard was actually player of the match and here are his post-game comments in his chat with uh, Alex Jordan. Obviously, for someone who has played for West Indies over a period of time, walking out to bat in St. Lucia, played here, captain here as well, in the crowd bull, I think, you know, we can continue to do that throughout the entire tournament. Um, in this stage of my career, I'm just enjoying my cricket. And if they want to continue to raise something from on the inside, they can continue to do so. It's fine. What yeah. did he say? That, that last phrase? Oh, you didn't the get it. The last phrase. Yeah, if they can continue to erase something from the inside. No, listen, I, the, uh, what I picked up from that more than anything else was Karen Pollard talking about being booed um, <laughs> when he was walking out. And I, I can understand his disappointment, yeah. but this is what franchise cricket is about. That's what I would say to Karen Pollard. If Karen Pollard went and played for the St. Lucia Kings tomorrow morning, they would celebrate him in a massive way. I, I just think you have to understand that. Um, and, and yes, maybe booing is going a little bit far, um, but sometimes fans express themselves in that way. And Karen Pollard, as far as I'm concerned, did the perfect thing by smashing 52 of 19 balls and say, yes, you can be quiet now. This. I've silenced you in the way that matters. Yeah. yeah, that of course. And I love that. You know, one of the things about the CPL, right? It opens up the avenue for good banter, for healthy mm. banter. And what you can notice is like during during the matches in the stands, there are a lot of placards, you know, people dress up. It's a celebration. We can tease each other. We can agree to disagree. And that is what makes the CPL the biggest party in sport. You have to remember, they give you prizes for these celebrations on the field. So that Polly response was absolutely perfect. It didn't require much out of him. Just this and of course be quiet. But it got the response it wanted from the audience. And we just have to remember that they get prizes for these things too. <laughs> <laughs> and Polly never want to back down from from no. from from some some banter, and we saw that in all its glory last night. Yeah, well, speaking about backing down from bantering, you know, we always have to banter with the producers, but let's see if we have to do that today. It's time now for our favorite part of this segment, outside of the discussion. That's the Angostura play of the day. Height and no distance. 
but just, just, oh, brilliant! Absolutely outstanding from David Visa. He used and stretched every sinew of his six feet plus with extended arms. Alzari Joseph was in his periphery. He was looking at Alzari Joseph to his left, but also looking at the ball. Look at that. Full stretch dive. What a catch. That was a super sweet catch. Usually we disagree with the producer's choice, but today I stand with them. I think that was top class. What about both of you? I, I don't have a difficulty with that. That was a tremendous catch. And as uh, Sammy Badri pointed out in the commentary, um, uh, Azari Joseph wasn't too far away from him, probably seven meters or so. And when you're running in desperately to try to take a catch like that, you can be unsettled by one of your teammates moving in the direction of the ball as well. So to me, that adds to the difficulty of the catch. And it was splendid from Visa. Yeah, and I add one thing to that as well. The commentary from Ian Bishop sold the moment brilliantly as well. Definitely an Angostura moment of the day. Wow, I can't believe the producers got it right. I'm so happy for them. We all agree. So remember, viewers, the Republic Bank Caribbean Premier League continues tonight. That's 6 p.m. if you're in Jamaica, 7 ECT. Live from the Kensington Oval, the unbeaten Barbados Royals against the high-flying Antigua and Barbuda Falcons. Don't want to miss it.